Okay, so we're just going to go over a, a few sort of conceptual details um, that weren't covered in class. And also, this is just, uh, I have a new toy and I want to try it out. Uh, this is our new light board. We're going to try using this to make some math videos. Um, so I'll, I'll remind you. What does it mean for a function to be continuous at a point? Well, this is this requirement that the limit of your function should equal the value of the function, right? And then if you can, uh, if you can check that this works uh, for every point in an interval, you can talk about functions being continuous on an interval. Um, and, and similarly, you could talk about what does it mean for a function to be differentiable at a point. And this is also stated in terms of a limit. So limit as h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Uh, so this limit exists, and if it exists, this is your, your derivative, right, f prime of a. So this should exist. Okay, so just to remind you graphically what things look like, if you were drawing the graph of a function, so let's put some axes in there, let's draw a graph. So. We'll draw a graph that has maybe a few interesting things going on in it. Well, let's do something like that. Okay. So here, here's the graph of some function. It comes in, in lots of different pieces. And you want to look at what's going on. Um, so we have a few points of discontinuity, of course. Remember that. Uh, Anywhere you see a jump in the graph, something like this, right? We change from this y value to that y value, um, right? The left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit, so, so you're not dealing with the continuous function at that point. Uh, same thing going on over here. Um, we have a couple of points there where you've got a kind of a bend in the graph, a corner in the graph. Um, you do have a continuous function there. You just don't have a differentiable function because remember that Differentiability means that you can draw a tangent line at that point. So if I draw the tangent line to my curve through that point, remember that if this is my, that's my point A, the slope of this line is given by the derivative f prime of A. Uh, and one of the things you'll notice is that if you were to zoom in on this picture, so if I were to maybe kind of take a little zoom window and, and, and put it down here, then what you would see if you zoomed in is you would see, oh, let's try to match colors. You would see that here's my curve, here's my line, and they're pretty close together when you're at that point where you're taking the derivative. You, you know, you, there's not a lot of room between the two. Um, you, if you zoom in enough, you won't even be able to tell them apart. Whereas if I tried to do the same thing at one of these points where I've got a corner or a cusp, something like this, well, if I try to fit a line, right, you want to sort of think of this as your best fit line. It's the line where the slope sort of best approximates the original graph. But here there's, you know, it doesn't matter how I, how I draw this line, right? Those, those lines don't look anything like what the graph looks like there because I have that corner. It doesn't matter how much I zoom in on that point, right? If I have a corner and I try to draw a line, it's, it's going to have the same shape no matter how much I zoom in, right? So I don't have a derivative at a point like that. Uh, another place where I don't have a derivative is any of these points of discontinuity. In fact, um, and let's state this as a fact. Um, every differentiable function is continuous. Um, how do you see that? Well, 
here's how we, how we might uh, do this. So I don't know, maybe we'll call this a proof or at least some, some solid circumstantial evidence that this is true. Uh, so probably you would agree that one way I could rewrite this, this um, condition here for continuity is I could say, well, this would be the same thing as convincing you that if I did the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a, well, I'd like to show that that limit is zero. How can I convince you that this limit is zero? Well, this limit would be the same thing as if I take my f of x minus f of a, and I divide by x minus a, and then I multiply by x minus a. Um, so how do I know now that my limit is zero? Well, remember that this part here, that's another way of rewriting this difference quotient that we had over here in our definition of the derivative. And so this part here, once I take the limit, once I apply the limit to these two parts, remember the limit of a product is product of the limits. Well, this is f prime of a. And what do I get when I take the limit of this part as x goes to a? I'm going to get a minus a. That's going to be 0. So yeah, this is true. Um, but uh, the converse is not true. It's not true that every continuous function is differentiable. And the standard example that you might see is our good friend the absolute value function, okay? So the absolute value function is continuous at zero, but it's not differentiable at zero, okay? So how do we know that it's continuous? Well, Remember that the way this thing is defined is this thing is defined to be x if x is bigger than or equal to 0, and it's minus x if x is less than 0. And it's this standard exercise in verifying continuity for a piecewise defined function. I check that the left-hand limit as x approaches 0 equals the right-hand limit equals the value of the function, right? I'm checking this definition. I see that all of those equal out to be 0. That tells me that I'm continuous, right? Um, we can see this from the graph as well. Remember what the graph looks like for absolute value, something like this. On the other hand, if I, if I tried to calculate the derivative for this, what would the derivative look like? The derivative at 0 would look like the limit as h goes to 0 of, well, let's see. I'm going to put a equals 0 in here, so a plus h, that's just going to be h. Uh, my function is absolute value. So f of a plus h is just f of h. That's absolute value of h. Um, what about f of a? Well, again, a is 0. That's just absolute value of 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Let's not even bother to write it. And I've got to divide by h. Okay. And now you can see that there's a problem because depending on whether we approach 0 from the left or the right, um, and then I guess we're not quite talking about the derivative anymore, so let's just ignore that. Well, what happens if we let h approach 0 from the left or the right? If we approach from the right, well, that means that h is bigger than 0, so absolute value of h is just h. h over h is 1 plus 1. If we're approaching from the left, h is less than 0. This becomes minus h, minus h over h. Well, that would be minus 1, right? So left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit. So the overall limit, f prime of 0, it does not exist. So even though our graph is continuous at that point, we can see it's exactly this sort of picture here where we can't possibly fit a tangent line to the graph at 0 because we have this corner in the graph, right? So continuity means that we don't have any breaks in the graph. We don't have any jumps. 
we don't have any holes, right? So if we had like a hole in the graph here, we'd have a discontinuity. Um, if we had a vertical asymptote, we know that gives us a discontinuity. Um, differentiability is a much stronger condition. Not only do you have to avoid having these breaks in the graph, but you also need to avoid having the corners, right? So it's an extra condition you're putting uh, on top of simple continuity. All right, um, so that's a summary of, of the difference between continuity and differentiability, and uh, we'll go back to doing some computations in class.